everyone it is danny and welcome to this update video this evening and so as we can see immediately from this graphic from the national hurricane center of course there's tammy out there that will continue to weaken and eventually dissipate as it loiters around in the open waters of the atlantic but now two areas to watch for development more so this one here because uh, that caribbean disturbance it might not develop the chance is decreasing for that to happen so we'll talk more about it in a moment that does not mean there will be no impacts as there could still be those periods of heavy rainfall across some areas we'll be talking about all of these coupled with that pacific disturbance and we're actually going to be kickstarting with it so here we are looking at the seven day outlook from the national hurricane center and it is given a high 90 percent chance to develop through both 48 hours and seven days so potentially by the next couple of days or even sooner it may attain tropical depression status eventually a tropical storm may form from it and the next name to be used for the eastern pacific hurricane season is pillar if this reaches that threshold it will become pillar and loiter around and once it gets very close to the coast it will induce a lot of heavy rainfall across areas portions of southern mexico near the coast of guatemala el salvador honduras even to nicaragua potentially for costa rica as well so depends on how much the system is drifting toward the mainland territories we'll definitely have to watch out for that in the new week but now we're heading back over into the atlantic and let's first talk about our caribbean disturbance so this disturbance here is now given a 10 percent chance to develop it's still going to drift up to the north and uh this is the chance for tropical cyclone development not all the activity associated with it on a whole there is some dry air ahead and the shear might not be the most conducive to allow for development so that chance has been going down uh, earlier this morning it was at 20 percent now this afternoon it is at 10 percent and a zero percent chance of formation through the next two days so this is unlikely to become a tropical cyclone thankfully but it could be quite the rainmaker for portions of the northern caribbean headed toward jamaica sections of cuba potentially haiti and the bahamas as well as we head to around monday going to tuesday and even into Wednesday as well for the Bahamas, there could be that rainfall activity and with a lot of heavy rainfall. And by the way, this won't be the case for everyone, but with a lot of heavy rainfall across some areas, flooding could be triggered. There could also be mudslides. So that rainfall activity from the system is going to be the main concern as it makes its way up to the north. But of course, I'll keep you guys posted on it. And now we're moving on to this new area. So this is actually designated as an invest. It is invest 96L. Again, if you're not familiar with it, an invest. Invest is an area of investigation. It's been closely watched for development. This may quickly develop as we're going to be heading into tomorrow, maybe even into early on Monday, but later on the day, conditions will get way too unfavorable to allow for any further development and intensification. So let's take a look at the system uh, on satellites. And here we can see a close imagery. We can actually see that exposed center of circulation, that low level center of circulation. Look very closely. There you can see that. A counterclockwise spin so that is what is drifting up to the northwest and it may try to quickly get itself together as we're going to be heading into the next uh, day or so now there is a lot of activity associated with this and it has been inducing a lot of heavy rainfall the trough has been inducing a lot of heavy rainfall across the eastern islands the virgin islands some spots in puerto rico even for the northern leeward islands as well i have been seeing the comments from you guys about the rain st martin anguilla uh, antigua as well so amid all that flooding i hope that everyone is doing okay right now but i want to slow this down and take a look at those clouds look at those clouds growing and take a look at where they push off to the northeast. They're pushing off quite quickly as they develop. That is the work of the wind shear. So those winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere, this is what it does. Take a look at it. That's why that center is exposed right now. So if it fails to get a lot of activity around it, then uh, we won't see much development. The shear may be conducive for just enough time to allow for this to quickly develop into a tropical depression or even a tropical storm. If it becomes a named storm, the next name on the list is Vince. So let's see if this will try to become Vince between now and tomorrow, really, because I mean, uh, those waters are very warm to support development around 29 degrees Celsius. Here we are looking at the sea surface temperature map. We can see around 29 degrees Celsius, 28 degrees in that area. So generally warm uh, and favorable to allow for those 
those uh, thunderstorms to continue to grow. But again, the wind shear is currently impacting the system. We can see it on these satellites. However, let's go on to this here. Those red lines indicate the stronger shear. The shear may become conducive as we head into tomorrow to allow it that window of opportunity to try to quickly develop, even becoming a brief tropical cyclone. But this is likely to parallel the uh, Turks and Caicos Islands as well as the Bahamas. However, there is likely to be continued rainfall activity with periods of very heavy rain across the Lesser Antilles as all that activity uh, makes its way into the system. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at the satellite imagery, the infrared sunlight. This is the one that's quite colorful. And here we can see all of this increase in moisture, all that activity associated with the disturbance. And so uh, this is likely, as I said, the rainfall activity is likely to continue for the Lesser Antilles as we head into not only tomorrow or the rest of today, but potentially even into Monday as well. So we'll definitely need to look out for that. As for that Caribbean disturbance, we're not seeing a whole lot of activity associated with it right now. And it's quite windy for some of us in the Northwest Western Islands, but uh, the reason that disturbance is unlikely to develop, going back to that wind shear map, take a look at this. The shear isn't the most conducive ahead of the system. And also, as we look at the dry air map, the dry air is marked by those areas of yellows, oranges, and reds. The more intense or vibrant the color is, the more dense that dry air mass is. So we can see that there is some dry air up ahead for it. And even look into 96L, there is some dry air ahead of it as well. So it has that small window of opportunity, as I said. And as for that Caribbean disturbance, a combination of those unfavorable conditions and the fact that the system isn't really getting itself together right now is the reason NHC has downgraded that formation chance. But as I said, it could still be a rainmaker for some islands of the Northern Caribbean headed up to the Bahamas. Going back to Invest 96L, as it relates to the model track guidance, here we can see that models are keeping the system offshore of the islands. But even though that center may remain offshore, uh, if it is close enough, it may actually help to induce some rainfall activity across the Bahamas and even the Turks and Caicos Islands as well. But generally, we can see that these tracks are in agreement for the most part that it will be staying offshore, paralleling the islands. As it relates to the intensity, we're not seeing where a whole lot of models are expecting that this will be a tropical storm and retain that status for long. So uh, about half of them expecting that it will become a tropical storm, but will be a pretty weak one. As I said, that share is going to be increased in as we head into Monday. And so guys, I'll continue to keep you posted on this and uh, later in the week, headed to the latter part of next week, we could see another area of low pressure form and try to develop into a tropical cyclone in the South Caribbean. So we'll definitely have to be watching out for that. This is the time of year to expect these systems popping up in the Caribbean because I mean, conditions are still conducive, especially as it relates to the uh, waters, the sea surface temperatures out there. And also uh, the fact that there's just a lot of energy to support support development of these low pressure areas when they form. But of course, other conditions such as the uh, upper level winds as well as a lot of moisture have to be in place to allow for further development and intensification of it. So when there's a lot of dry air, when that shear is too strong, that inhibits significant formation. But I'm here to keep you posted so that you're never caught off guard. And that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this evening update. And I hope you found it to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weather wise.